channel. Today we are going a little bit more old school by that. I mean back to the first days of the channel when I was doing a lot of conversations about um, health and wellness and specifically the ketogenic low carb lifestyle. However, in this video, we're not going to talk necessarily about keto, but we are going to talk about OMAD. Hey everyone, it's Joel. Uh, I've never watched one of Carly's videos legitimately. I just clicked onto this. I also do OMAD and this week I've been doing some reaction videos. As Carly said, sounds like she's into keto and low carb and is trying OMAD for 25 days. I have been doing OMAD for over a year and I've got lots of videos on my channel. Check out this one here where I, I wherever the link is, uh, where I tell you about one year on the OMAD diet and how much weight I lost. But let's check out how Carly did for 25 days and I'll see if uh, any of her advice stacks up. What does OMAD stand for? It stands for one meal a day. I have posted a video about this um, earlier, like a year or so ago, so I will link that down below. However, I'm not going to really be explaining OMAD so much in this video, more as my experience with it. I did just try it for an extended amount of time, um, almost a month, and That's OMAD means one meal a day. So um, just kind of sharing with you what worked, what didn't work, what my results were, if it's something that I would do again, if it's something that perhaps you should try, and really just kind of having a conversation with you guys because I haven't done that in a while. So let's head into it. Let's do it. Oh, mad. One meal a day. That sounds terrifying, I know, to so many bad. people. If you know anything about intermittent fasting, really OMAD is just kind of like the most extreme intermittent fasting you can do. So in intermittent fasting, what you're doing is you're giving your body a break, a very long extended break between the times when you eat. So you might hear people who intermittent fast talk about how they don't eat breakfast and they only eat within a certain window. So they might eat from say 12 o'clock in the afternoon is when they'll have- Okay, although she said and promised that she wasn't gonna go through what fasting and OMAD is, the first thing she did is go through what fasting and OMAD is, but yeah. If you're watching this video, you probably have an idea what OMAD is. Let me skip ahead. She also said, Carly, that uh, she did this for a long period of time. Look, I'm not going to judge you, but like 25 days is probably not long enough to really understand whether or not you like OMAD or whether or not you like fasting. And even your results are probably going to be a bit atypical of what you might expect if you have been doing it for a longer period. When I first set out doing this, I did a, I, my goal was to do 100 days and I've shared those videos about 30 days, 60 days and 100 days. I've been doing it now for over a year. So I definitely recommend uh, if you're trying to do something new for 2024 in particular for New Year's Eve, don't think about 30 days, don't think about 20 days, two weeks, one week. Think about six weeks, think about 12 weeks, think about a year, think about six months. If you have that mindset, in my opinion, you're much more likely to stick to your goals and you're much more likely to really experience what these types of eating patterns are all about. Anyway, I'm gonna skip through the introduction to OMAD. Sorry, Carly, I already know what it is and all the junk that we eat all the time. So that's intermittent fasting. So one meal a day is when basically you're saying, hey, I'm going to make that window even shorter and perhaps I'm going to only... Yep, I didn't skip far enough. Um, despite promising not to tell us what OMAD was, uh, we're like four minutes in and we're still talking about what OMAD is. Okay, let's get to the next topic, her experience. Take it away, Carly. Well, I did have this extra time. It was easy to not be focused on food. It really was. I didn't feel like I was starving. Um, the hard part is that there were a couple days in not even the very beginning, I would say week two, where I started to feel like around lunchtime, like, oh, I just feel tired and I could eat right now. And I will say for the most part, I was able to not give in to that and then to instead refocus my time and attention elsewhere. Um, I did struggle hard at the end with headaches. And I think it's because I also changed the way that I was consuming coffee. That is the biggest thing for me because even if you've been following me with my keto lifestyle earlier in my channel, you know, I went super, super strict keto. I lost a lot of weight and then I started to kind of transition myself back into a more um, normal lifestyle way of eating. However, one of the things I've always kept is by starting my day with a bulletproof coffee and probably I would say very quickly into this one meal a day, um, diet for this extended amount of time, I cut out the Bulletproof coffee. And I did keep coffee, but I just kept black coffee. And wow, I noticed a huge difference because I immediately was getting tired, smack in the middle of the day, tired, tired. I was able to get myself through it, but towards the end, I, start, I did start to get headaches. And I think part of that is because when you're doing one meal a day, you really should be eating very clean, nutritious, items that are really gonna just like fuel you and give you everything that you need for especially then the following day. Yeah, I can understand a lot of this is um, related to uh, people when they start uh, OMAD and, and also people that when they start keto, they get the, the keto flu, which is essentially when your body, the keto flu is, is when your body is adapting to using fat as your energy source. Um, and as you make that transition, you do feel a little bit under the weather as your body's still adapting 
uh, and it also helps uh, your body trigger cravings for sugar and carbohydrates. Um, with OMAD, it's a little different. Um, sometimes your uh, headaches can be caused by um, lack of electrolytes. So if you're not eating, you tend to drink more, uh, whether that's water or and or coffee. And remember, coffee is a diuretic, and that can make you urinate more. And the more you pee out, the more electrolytes you lose, and the more likely you are to develop headaches and fogginess. So maybe that's got something to do with it. Also, um, if Carly was having uh, keto coffees and has gone to uh, fasting in OMAD and she's having no calories throughout the day, including that keto coffee, she's dropping the fat. Now, I think keto coffee or bulletproof coffee is stupid, uh, personal opinion, and really you're just adding fat to your coffee instead of um, other calories from milk, which also has uh, you know lactose and sugars and so sorts of things. So you're essentially just adding calories to your coffee. Um, and the reason you would add fat if you're on a ketogenic diet and you're fat adapted is because you can access that as a fuel source. And if you take that fat away, your body's then going to be under stress for not having that fuel source. So I can totally understand what she's saying. I would just recommend as a rule of thumb, keto coffee is a bit of a waste of time, in my opinion. Black coffee is great. So if you are experiencing a headache on OMAD, particularly uh, early on, try adding some salt to your, um, to your water or doing a zero calorie electrolyte supplement like a Gatorade or... There are many other brands out there. I'm not going to name any because they won't sponsor me. Um, all right, let's go. Foods, because I didn't do that this time. And I definitely noticed a difference. Now, with all of that, okay, what was the outcome? Did I lose any weight? How was I feeling at the end of it? All of those things. I will say, again, it definitely... Um, how would I say this? It definitely helped squash actually my appetite. It kind of suppressed my appetite because once my body got used to not having to eat all the time... Um, it just got used to it. And now I'm back in that schedule where like I can have some of my bulletproof coffee stuff in the morning and then I'm fine for the most rest of the day. However, um, the headaches were just like, br were brutal. Um, I did fail two days out of the almost 30 that I did. And one of them was my sister's baby shower. And the other one was just because I was feeling so sick, so depleted, so tired. Um, migraines, I could not, I couldn't even drive. I yeah, that's unfortunate for Kelly that she, um has suffered from that like i said adding some electrolytes might help also 25 days it's really hard for your body to really adapt in that period of time being short um in my opinion so perhaps if she had a tried uh persisting for another 30 days her experience might have been different um but yeah it's it's a shame when people um do experience those sorts of symptoms and it does prevent them from doing fasting um but it, it's fasting is not for everybody and it's not the be and all and end all if you don't want to fast or you can't make fasting work. There are plenty of other ways to manage calories, which is really what fasting helps you achieve. I did lose about four to five pounds. Now, again, if you've been following me on my keto stuff, you know that I lost a lot of weight on that earlier, um, about two years, two years ago now. And I have been able to maintain, which has been great, little ups and downs, but really overall, I've not hit that big number again where I feel like I was at when I started. So losing four to five pounds for me was great. Throughout that process of the month long, um, diet change it did go up and down a little bit and I think that's just natural you know from like where your body is that month and bloating and things like that however by the end of it I definitely lost a good solid like four to five pounds and for me that's really good because percentage wise that's fine for me I don't need to lose crazy weight anymore so just maintaining is good so a healthy four to five pounds is yeah I mean just looking at Kelly, I've never watched her videos but she doesn't look like she could afford to lose much more than four to five pounds I mean looks looks like she's in great shape she's not carrying a lot of face uh a lot of extra fat in her face or, or around her neck uh, so I'm assuming she's in pretty good shape so four to five pounds lost is probably uh, pretty good which would go to show you if you're looking for a bump along maybe you've got uh, something coming up in 30 days trying a nomad um, lifestyle uh, for 30 days might help you just lose that bit of extra weight you're looking for I personally over the course of a year lost and maintained about a 25 pound weight loss which wasn't dramatic uh, and I still could lose more. I mean, look at me, I'm carrying a lot of fat still, um, but I certainly think it's an effective way to uh, lose weight and maintain a weight loss uh, because of the calorie restriction that you achieve. And there are some um, benefits with fasting as well, which I won't go into perfect for me right now so it did do that i did get used to it it did cause headaches i think i should have planned that was all my fault if you guys have done omad what type of omad did you do have did you do vegetarian did you do keto low carb have were you doing whole 30 like what are the kind of ways that you were doing omad because i didn't have a specific way that i was doing it because i again i didn't want to have to fill my mind with the stress of thinking but exactly can i and can i not eat so I well thank you for asking carly the type of omad i do is just basically time restricted eating 
I don't use any other form of calorie restriction or any other form of dieting, whether that's a macro restriction like keto or low carb or paleo or Atkins or South Beach and I could go on and on and on. Um, the, in my opinion, OMAD is effective because you're eating only once in a day as opposed to three or four square meals a day, sometimes more, and therefore your overall calories should be restricted. And if you can maintain that calorie restriction for the longer term, more than 25 days would be ideal, you should experience some overall weight loss. Uh, that's why I do OMAD. And that, the reason I'm not restrictive is because I find it's more sustainable. If I only restrict the time that I eat, when I do eat, I can eat whatever I want and I don't feel like I'm on such a restricted, prohibited diet. I'm just choosing not to eat at certain times. Um, also, Kelly mentioned earlier, she slipped up during her 25 days twice which is pretty high strike rate <laughs> if you're doing OMAD. We typically like to be more consistent than that, but I also don't judge people for slipping up. The most important thing is sustaining uh, a fasting routine and OMAD is ideal for me, not for everybody. And you know, if you do slip up for one day and you have two meals or a longer eating window, just don't turn that into a week of slip ups. Same with any um, diet or any lifestyle change. Don't let your mistakes snowball into massive problems. Just get back on the horse and start fasting again. Uh, so if you want to find out about how I choose to fast, check out this beginner guide here, which should help anyone that's just looking to start fasting. And if you're looking to do a long-term fast, check out my uh, 365 Days on OMAD video over here. I hope you like the channel. Check out Carly's channel. I certainly will be looking at some more of her videos. And check out my channel if you want more information on OMAD. Peace. Bye, Carly.